to begin with, this was the West Wing was an accident. Uh, okay, it, it was one of those times when um, being timid paid off. <laughs> uh, uh, really, I uh, I had never thought about doing television. I watched as much television uh, as anybody, but I didn't know anything about uh, how you make a television show, how you write a television show. Um, I I. I I was faking my way as a screenwriter. The only thing I felt comfortable as was a playwright. Uh, uh, but I was, I was writing movies, uh, uh, too. And my agent said, uh, you know, I want you to have lunch with John Wells. Uh, and everybody knew that John Wells was a really quality television producer. He had ER, he had China Beach uh, on the air. Uh, and I said, sure, you know, I'd, I'd, I'll have lunch uh, with John Wells. But I had no intention of, of doing a television show. Uh, and the night before that lunch with John Wells, I had some friends over to my house for dinner. One of those friends was a writer named Akiva Goldsman, who had not yet won the Academy Award for writing A Beautiful Mind. Uh, and I told him about the lunch I was having the next day. Uh, but, you know, it's just a lunch. I'm not going to be doing a television series. And during dinner, we snuck off down to my office down in the basement uh, to have a cigarette. Um, it's also a rare moment when smoking paid off. <laughs> and he looked at the posters on my wall and he pointed to the poster for The American President, which is a romantic comedy I'd written in the 90s. And he said, you know what would make a good television series? That, if forget about the romance between the president and the lobbyist, if you just kind of focused on the senior staff uh, at the White House. I said, Kiwi, I'm, I'm not going to write a, a, a television series. I don't know how. Uh, I'm just having lunch tomorrow. <laughs> when I got to the lunch the next day, I walked in the restaurant. I could instantly see this is not what I thought it was going to be. It wasn't a, hey, how are you doing lunch? John had come with several executives from Warner Brothers, several agents from CAA. And I sat down, and John said, so, what do you want to do? And instead of saying, I think there's been a misunderstanding, <laughs> I don't have anything to pitch, I said, I want to do a show about senior staffers at the White House. <laughs> Writing happens in the strangest way. It, it, it weighs, or at least it does with me. Um, and sometimes it, it, it happens in the reverse order that it appears. For instance, with this episode, um, uh, when I'm blocked, which I am almost all the time, people ask me if I have writer's block. Writer's block is my default position. <laughs> Sometimes, every once in a while, I have an idea, um, uh, and I'm able to write. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, one of the things that I would do all the time with the West Wing, with everything, but particularly with the West Wing, I'd get in my car and I'd drive around and I'd listen to music. Um, uh, and kind of try to start an argument with myself. That, that, that's how it usually happens. In fact, uh, one day the president of NBC had a messenger uh, deliver a package to me at my office. It was uh, a headset meant to be paired with my car phone. And there was a note with it that said, I was next to you at a red light earlier today. Please always wear this headset. You look insane. <laughs> So I was driving around, and generally the music I'll listen to, is, uh, my taste in music and my taste in food stopped maturing as soon as I graduated from high school. <laughs> that was it. It's frozen there. Uh, so I was listening to the music that I listened to in high school, and I was listening to Dire Straits. Uh, and I was, listening, I was listening to Brothers in Arms. Um, and uh, I thought, boy, you would, I would love to write a scene that this song could be the score. Uh, uh, for. You know, score is usually the last thing you do. You look at what you've done and, it, it, and you try to figure out what music should be there. Here the music came uh, up first um, and I would drive around listening to this music and I saw that whole ending, Charlie waving off the coat and, uh, uh, and, and all of that um, and, uh, and I started writing the episode. I don't think we need better voters. We're just fine. We need better candidates. Oh, uh, no question a, and about a, that. And not a two-party system. More than a two-party system. That's okay. what I want to say. Okay, I'm 100% with you. And <laughs> leave it to me to argue with something just so obviously true is what you just said. <laughs> but I'll give it a go. I think better voters get us better uh -huh. candidates. Uh, okay? Um, uh, I think, listen, I think in a democracy, how can it not ultimately be the responsibility uh, of the voters? Um, and 
Uh, listen, we're right to point to all the people we're pointing at now in Washington saying, oh my God, it is, this is so un-American, uh, uh, what's going on. Um, but when are we going, when are voters going to bear some responsibility uh, uh, for this? When are we going to have, you know, every four years, there's this incredible opportunity uh, because most people uh, don't have time to do much more than get through their day, um, uh, uh, put food on the table, take care of their kids. Uh, uh, the, uh, but every four years, we have an opportunity to hear the best form of two or more competing ideas. And that's usually how you get uh, uh, the best solution. We have an opportunity to hear a great debate uh, and, and make progress. And we never hear the great debate. It's always nonsense. It's Hillary's emails. Uh, uh, we just, it's wasted every time. Um, and that is so frustrating. So I'll tell you what, you and I will work both ends. You bring on the better candidates, I'll bring them better voters, and that's how they'll get into office.